So, hey, welcome, Randy Doyle Podcast, and I have got not just a guest, but a friend, uh, and a friend of many within the industry, Jason Rose, is with us. Hey, everyone. <sighs> Hi. Man, and uh, I'll tell you, we just had, um, we did an extreme one day with Jason, our first one here in Big Bear, and uh, was that fun, or 14 people. Yeah, and uh, it was, a, like I said to the class, it was um, a, a real awesome experience for me coming out of you know being uh shut down in my own academy so having a class that size it was my very first you know larger ish Mm -hmm. kind of class uh so it was super awesome for me and it was great co-training with you wasn't that awesome yeah it was fun it's it's cool because we've been able to watch each other uh and and this is a message i want you guys to listen to closely we've we've watched each other mature and come about in the industry and and we come from a humble tumble uh, rock'em sock'em robot mm-hmm. stage of detailing where nobody got along, and we've yeah. always got along, but we've gotten now our joint effort is so yeah. commingled. Yeah, does that make sense? Yeah, and it's awesome. I I like where the industry is at right now because you know you and I have been in it long enough, and yes, I just called us both old. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, we've been doing it long enough that there was a time, you know, when. Um, uh internet when social media wasn't there when uh networks and associations weren't there and you know there's no detail mafia there was no ida there was so you're kind of like on your own trying to make stuff happen absolutely and 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 you you couldn't share your recipes with other people oh no it would be like you're helping your competitor absolutely so today we're going to talk a lot about careers we're going to talk a lot about a lot in a in a short 45 minutes to an hour. But, you know, a lot of people, let's talk about what a lot of people ask. We hear constantly, both as individuals and as companies within our brands, is, you know, I hear this from the standpoint of you, mm. is, hey, you know, guys like Jason Rose, mm. how do I get a job like that? You mm. know, so that's one of the things I hear constantly well one one short answer is just wait until i die and then my (laughs) my position will be available (laughs) that's exactly it but i want to tell you you know we're really close to the same age and we expect to with new technologies uh in a lot of drugs uh not (laughs) illegal drugs uh enhancement drugs we can live a long time yeah you know so that job's probably not going to become available (laughs) too too soon soon. so not if i can help it (laughs) but let's talk about that people that want to take in get a career going um i hear so many times and it's not just young people it's younger ish people and and i i i definitely see why they're you know detailing entrepreneurship Mm. can be very challenging and there's a lure because you travel all over the world you work with one of the sexiest brands Mm. in the Mm. industry if not the sexiest brand in the industry and so what another you know another great brand as mcguire's for 20 oh. years so i mean what i mean two brands in our industry mcguire's and rupus it's pretty cool fantastic yeah yeah i mean the cool rate on that's pretty high yeah. so so what's your answer to that i mean it it you know what 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 was what was your glide path on that what did it look like when you first went to mcguire's you know you, how many years were you in the trenches as a detail entrepreneur before that time 12 years 12 years um and then a uh, you know, so I've told my story uh, on the transition from a detailer to, you know, being a manufacturer's rep at McGuire's. Mm-hmm. But the details of that, uh, a lot of people kind of see what I'm doing now and the glamour of, oh, my gosh, he's over, you know, in another country training and he's doing this and that. Mm-hmm. And it looks it looks really fun on the outside. <laughs> right. But um, what most people don't know is it's a heck of a lot of work. Um, it is. And it it took a lot of relationship building with some people and a lot of connections and a lot of um, working hard to be in the right position to get the next level of, you know, exposure and training. So it's not as easy as it looks is no. my main thing. But And then the other part of this story is I was a detailer in the trenches for 12 years. And I told part of that story with your class yesterday mm. that the first six of it were struggling unsuccessfully as a detailer. So I first had to figure out, you know, and it took years to figure out how to be successful. And then once you are, you know, what is that next thing for you? And you kind of want to do the next thing. But what a lot of people don't know is from the moment that I decided I wanted to join McGuire's to the day that I did actually join the company Mm -hmm. was three years. Three years, 36 months to make that work. Yeah. A lot of hustling. So it's not as easy as it looks. I mean. 
And it's one of those things that as a detailer, um, manufacturers of chemicals or pads or tools, uh, they, they love that connection with detailers. But um, when detailers decide, oh, I want to be a, a manufacturer's rep or represent a brand, your experience as a detailer is not enough Mm-mm. to get that position. And so a lot of detailers don't understand that. They're like, I'm a great detailer. Why don't I represent that brand? Well, if you think of it from the manufacturer's perspective, what they need is somebody who has either distribution experience or uh, training experience or sales, you know, of sales of tools and compounds of experience. So being a detailer is not the skill set that no. It just opens the door and like, oh, yeah, we'll hire you as a detailer because we need a detailer. You know, that's not how it works. Dylan Dylan actually had uh, a lot of interaction on social media about this very topic. Mm-hmm. And it's like, hey, just because you're a great detailer and you're, you know, have a great name in detailing doesn't – it doesn't automatically open the door for you to get some of these jobs with manufacturers. No. I took and I, I, I sold my first detailing company. I sold it. I, then I went into window tinting, window coverings, grew that, sold that company. And I decided right then and there, to your point, I had no corporate experience. I had no big business experience. So I went to work for a company out of Ireland for almost, I can't even remember, six, five, six, seven years, something like that. And I became, uh, in a couple of years, took me a couple of years, and I became international director of business development. Hmm. It wasn't by chance is I studied, I worked my ass off, yeah, yeah. and the exposure that I got from that company when I came back into entrepreneurship launched me. Yeah. And what that company really looked for is they're looking for somebody, a, a salesman. That's what I really went into. I didn't really want to be a salesman, but I knew I had to start somewhere in the company. And within six months, they saw some ability, and they kept giving me more opportunity. But I had to earn that opportunity. No, you're absolutely right. And that's exact. What you just described was the exact same steps that I took to get into McGuire. So I wanted entry level. I just knew I wanted to get in that company and Mm -hmm. I was looking for whatever open door. I don't care. I'll go in and sweep your floors, you know, kind of thing. Right. But they even their entry level sales position, I didn't qualify for. I was I was a detailer. I sold detail services, but that that's not the kind of selling that they were looking for. They wanted distribution experience and sales of, of their product. So when I say it took three years, that is the time it took to go get that experience and selling. So I actually went, I moved to Dallas, Texas, and worked for a distributor of Meguiar's products, selling Meguiar's products as a salesperson. <laughs> and then... And then when I called back to McGuire's, hey, do you have any positions? They're like, oh, well, you have experience. sales experience yeah, now. Yeah, right. So that's what opened the door. Isn't that ironic? Yeah. And so, so you know, and those are all things to think about. And and so um, you go on to, so so Rupes, so you work for McGuire's. I mean, that's when I got to know you. And yeah. during the whole, yeah. matter of fact, oh, I should find it. I've got a box. Remember when you guys were, were, were developing the DA system? Mm-hmm. When we moved our shops two years ago. I found a box addressed, handwritten out to me yeah. from you. I'm one of the follow-up test things. Yeah. But you said you told you sent me a, a uh, you called me and said, "Hey, I'm sending you two boxes. Ignore the first one, get the second one." Yeah. Well, I found the first one's never opened <laughs> up, and it still has your writing and everything on it, and oh, I've nice. kept it. So it's, I think it's up in our our little collection, our muse, museum piece right. from way back then. So. So now take us, transition us to Rupes, is that you go from Meguiar's, so now you go to uh, from one of the sexiest companies in existence to the, definitely one of the sexiest companies in existence globally. And, and how did that transpire? Well, and that's an interesting thing because um, as you pose the question of, you know, hey, so there's some detailers that want to have... Uh, an opportunity like what I'm doing now. Mm -hmm. Like they see what I'm doing now and they're like, wow, that would be really fun. I want to do that. Well, what they don't see is all the years and the, and the many steps it took to get to where I'm at now. So the Rupus opportunity came about because it was a, a door opening based on 
steps that have been taken for 20 years with Meguiar's mm-hmm. and 12 years as a detailer. So if I if I didn't put those 12 years in as a detailer, and if I didn't put those 20 years in with Meguiar's, the the phone call with Rupus wouldn't have even happened. Right. So all, all that groundwork. Yeah. Made the phone call happen. Right. Yeah, and that's and a lot of people don't realize that. And then, you know, you've been a huge part of of the team at Rupes is incredible. I mean, we all watched it. We used to call it in the industry the dream team. Mm. Did you know that? No. Oh yeah, we used to a lot of the industry. We called it the dream team. Mm. Um, it was amazing to watch you guys. And I, it, it, you know, okay, McGuire's great company. I mean, the impact McGuire's made. Yeah. Anybody that's a detailer that's breathing right now, we have in our DNA somewhere back in the in there or actively even now is 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 mcguire's yeah uh you just can't you just can't you know you you can't escape that with that being said rup s is a modern day company here in north america that came out of nowhere right and the dream team as we called it in the industry is is you know it was all with with respect once we started seeing chip you know start putting all of you guys together. We're like, oh my God, yeah. they're gonna slaughter it, you know? <laughs> yeah. They're gonna slaughter it. And and you guys did. But it, you know, the marketing, the appeal, the you know, I'm really big into culture, the 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 Rupes culture that you guys brought to America yeah. and worldwide was was insane. And that wasn't that didn't happen by accident, did it? No, and, and it's another perspective on what we're talking about here because the Rupus brand and the Bigfoot brand, it like you said, came out of nowhere for American market. Mm-hmm. Um, but that opportunity couldn't happen without Rupus history in Europe since 1947. Absolutely. So, A long, long history. You know, talk, talking about find foundational steps leading mm-hmm. you to an open door. They can't, you know. There is if it was a no-name company with no history, they couldn't jump over the pond and make no. big, Bigfoot happen. No, yeah. no way. I remember Marco. I remember talking to Marco the first time they were at a little tiny booth, little little yeah. tiny booth that you know at, at SEMA. Yeah. And 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 watching those those early day struggles, and saying who is this company, you know, and then going out and doing a little research and finding out, oh, you know, they're a they're a they're a big company. Uh, we just haven't seen them on our shores. Uh, yeah. in, in our industry. Right. And it was pretty impactful. So the other thing that we talk about a lot is both of us in our DNA is training. Yeah. And we hear a lot. So we get people that want to go in, they want to get, you know, a career. I don't blame them. Right. And whether, you know, you might love entrepreneurship, but there's, you know, being a person that went from an entrepreneur into a corporate job. Um, I want to tell you, it changed my life and not mm-hmm. for the worst. I yeah. mean, it was a really... Honestly, you want to you want to hear a funny story? I went mm. to them when I was going to launch the detailing company. I went to my boss, and I said it. he knew that I was looking at going back on my own. And he goes, "How can I keep you from moving? Mm. You know, I'd like to keep you in this this company for twenty years." And I said, "Here's what I want. I want to work because I traveled. I want to work from home. Mm. I'll come into the office once a week." And he goes, "Okay, done." And I said, "I don't want to a, a raise ever again." He said, well, we can do that. And I said, no, I want 1% of all my sales as commission. Mm. And this is, and he goes, okay, we can do that. And I said, and I want six weeks paid vacation a year. <laughs> because I'm like yeah. you, I'm really into the outdoors and yeah. stuff like that. And that was the hiccup. Yeah. Yeah. Had they given me that six weeks paid vacation, I probably wouldn't. Would have stayed. I yeah. would have stayed. Because it would have been a lifestyle at that point, And it just wasn't. Two weeks I felt like a, um, I felt like a hamster on a hamster wheel, you know. Is they ding the wheel and I get off and suck some water down and eat little hamster food, you know. Get back <laughs> over, and and so and it was an incredible, you know. It was owned by uh, the Irish, and so uh, out of Dublin. But it was a great time of my life, yeah. and so I understand people wanting to go that direction. Because well, and and to your point, the you know when detailers uh, especially get successful um they discover a lot about themselves right Mm -hmm. and uh i was one of those detailers that discovered on my own that i didn't want to be an entrepreneur i don't i don't want my own company and it took 12 years for me to figure that out but 
having done that, I'm I, I have no regrets. I'm like absolutely. Um, and then there are some people that are just wired to be entrepreneurs. My mm-hmm. dad was that way. He was just mm-hmm. to the you know textbook entrepreneur. Um, and then there are people that are wired um, to have a career and have you know a quote unquote job, right? And work with other companies or work within a company. And I found out that you know, given the right situation, I'm wired that way. I can't, I can't work for just any company. I can't have any job. Mm-hmm. I have to have my dream job, and that's the way I can have a job. I love it. <laughs> I love it. You went out and made your destiny. You made, you basically made your dream job. Yeah. yeah I mean, those twelve yeah. years in the trenches is. I love that. I love that angle. And you know, I I'll be I'll be direct, man. The the cost of you know, I'm wired. I, I am constantly thinking about how to grow things. But you can still do the same thing and have a career mm-hmm. in your dream job. And so it's the stresses of entrepreneurship, especially because there's a whole generation of detailers that have never seen an economic slowdown yet. Mm-hmm. And the stresses you face then um, are very intense. Yeah. So, you know, and not saying that your job, you know, the next economic slowdown is not going to be, it's not going to be easy. You know, you're going to have pressure on you. But it's not near as hard as watching your bank account dwindle right. and being stressed out about it, you know. So now if you plan it right, it won't affect you. Matter of fact, is is what I learned from corporate America uh, and my job was is I gained ground during those times. Mm. I became more powerful as a company during those times yeah. because I was modest with my spending during the big times. Mm-hmm. So I had cash. Cash is king. And the slow times where everybody else didn't, and I would just gobble up market share. Right. You know? Yeah. So let's talk about trainers. People constantly, we hear this. You and I, you know, yeah. in our DNA is is training. Um, you know, you through your career. So here's my training aspect is that I'm not, I just didn't get into detailing and think, okay, I'm going to go train. I am a, I'm a certified search and rescue uh, trainer mm-hmm. with the National Association for Search and Rescue. I'm a, I'm a certified trainer within the military. Both of those have put a tremendous amount of money into me to train me to be a trainer. Mm. You, McGuire's didn't just put you out in the field. Rupas just didn't put you out in the field. Is You've learned the capabilities and how to effectively train professionals. And I think a lot of people don't look at that aspect. Knowing how to detail is one thing. But knowing how to take and work with 14 personalities yesterday yeah. is another. So yeah. let's talk about people that are looking at they want to become trainers. Yeah, and I get this. I know you get this request where detailers are like, I'm ready for that you know, next plateau, that next thing. And they have their eye on training. They look at what we're doing, mm-hmm. and they're like, wow, I want to, I want to do what you're doing. Um, but it really isn't that easy. And to your point, um, just having the knowledge – doesn't make you a trainer and and just having the knowledge and wanting to share the knowledge doesn't make you an effective trainer cuz you actually have to have a skill set absolutely i mean tra- training and educating is a skill so the combination of knowing and having the detailing knowledge but also having the communication and the educating and the training skills the, those together are what get you into that kind of job and again, I think the survivability is that you're looking at a generation that just has not had to take in. We haven't had a lot of bumps mm. uh, in the last really eight years. I mean, it's been it's been eight years. Really, we were up on the upslide by 2010. 08 was done for us. Mm-hmm. You know, by 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 2010, we are already we are gaining ground even before that, probably right. 2009. Um, but we started getting fat again, so to say, in 2010. So that's 11 years that, that a lot yeah. of people just haven't seen. And, and I know there's people out there struggling. I'm not saying that. I know there's a lot of you that are brand new that you've come up through and you've worked your booty off to get where you're at. But when this, when this bubble burst, and you and I have seen several of those bubbles burst, it's going gonna, it's gonna to clean out the closet a little bit. Right. And, and you've got to be able to train people on how to survive that. And if you haven't gone yeah. through that yet, is that's one of the biggest things I've got. Um, and, and so, you know, training's hard. It, it, yeah, Jason walked in this morning. You know, what am I doing when you walk in? Fold, folding <laughs> yeah. hundreds of towels. 
you know, cleaning bathrooms, no, cleaning people, floors. No, people people see the glamorous side of training. Oh, this guy's up in front of a group and he's mm-hmm. like, you know, the guy that everybody's listening to and sharing knowledge. But what they don't see is what I saw this morning and what I do at my academy. Mm-hmm. And we, we both do it. We wash in pads. We mop the floor. We fold the towels. We, you know, clean the bathrooms. Clean the bathrooms right. and, and this is all, I mean, the training involves a lot of different aspects, including the dirty work. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Five days of training. So we've got a five-day training this next week, Monday, tomorrow. It takes five days of lead-up to get the shop ready, and it takes three to four days of follow-up to get mm. the shop yeah. kind of straightened back out again. Right. And so, the you know, the setup and the reset is, it's 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 tremendous. Uh, we actually do a, a um, a powwow after the training and our trainings and I know yours is cause I've been to yours. I've, I've seen it evolve. Every, tra- no training is exactly the same No, is that, you, you know, yeah. we, we constantly thrive. So here's the deal. If people want to be a trainer, I think it's great. Now, now there is opportunity. Um, you know, we've got five training centers, you know, uh, authorized training centers, uh, across the country. Uh, but those people have been vetted through, you know, me, they've come through our program and I saw, I, necessarily, they're not the best detailers in the world. They're the best at conveying how to go make money yeah. for yeah. the average detailer. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. And so, you know, you got trainers, and you, you guys have all handpicked those individuals because yeah. of their abilities to train, train others. Yeah. yeah, it's communication training. In addition to the product knowledge and the procedural knowledge of detailing, that's only a piece of it. So it goes back to what we started talking about, that um, just because a detailer who is ready to make their next move, um, but just because they're all, their skill set and all their experience is based on detailing, it doesn't automatically leapfrog you know, the short-term steps that you got to do to get to the point where you're now a corporate trainer. Absolutely. You know? and now I'll tell you if here's the deal. What I always tell people: we 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 started up a certification program uh, in our own shop, and and if you're not if your shop is is doesn't already have that in place, you you know you're probably not ready for it. Now if your shop does, is there are opportunities. Start out with mm. the IDA, but you're going to have to have some experience. Yeah, you need to build on the experience and also groom yourself. Mm-hmm. Uh, with the skill set of communicating and training, if that's what you want to do. And I, I don't want to, you know, the listeners here might be getting the impression that we're kind of um, bagging on the it, idea. It, yeah. but, um, I, I'm, I'm a cheerleader. for. Absolutely. I mean, if you have a goal, you want to be a, a trainer for a brand, mm-hmm. um, I support you. I'm all behind you. But part of that be supporting you is telling you that, it, it isn't as easy as you no. might think it is. <laughs> well, and you know, you can get your start by going in and, and volunteering to do uh, lectures for the IDA, going and volunteering to do lectures at, yeah. at, at, at Southern Detailers Conference, Mobile Tech, right. you know, all right. these different things. Volunteer. Start getting experience and see if you're that good. If you see that you're that good, they're going to have you back. Or yeah. people are going to gravitate you to you. That's going to tell you how good you are. Yeah. And then if you see that you're good and you enjoy it and you're making an impact in other people's lives... Okay, now you're now you're going the right direction. Yeah, yeah. and so there is positive to it. Um, spokespersons, uh, a lot of people is we went through earlier. There's not a lot of people in the industry that are making a living, a good enough living from being a spokesperson for a brand that could just live on that. Yeah, I don't, you know, as as crazy growth as our industry is going through, I don't think our industry has developed to the point where we have a critical mass of companies that are ready to, like, pay the big dollar six-figure stuff for, for spokespeople. Right. Um, I, I imagine that someday our industry will get there, but we're we're not there yet um but in the, in the short term there's um companies that are contracting and are hiring detailers to speak for their brand i mean Absolutely. that that is happening and there are some that are making six figures there are some that are not making enough to to sustain their lifestyle but they're supplementing their with lifestyle yeah. yeah yeah with detailing yeah 
Um, so, I mean, it's interesting, this whole spokesperson thing. And uh, uh, there are a lot of detailers that you and I interact with that, you know, they are, are seeking that kind of path. And again, if it's, that's where you want to go, then take it. You know, go for it. Make yourself valuable. Yeah. Justin Lobato, you know, you yeah. look at him, you yeah. know, with Buff and Shine, and uh, he's got his own brand. And he's one of the only ones I know. There's, there's only a couple people out there. Um, you know, that's how I started out, you know, is, yeah. is I, and I never, here's the other thing, make it happen organically, you know, don't try to force yourself into that position. Yeah. Is that it, it I, 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 it just happened with me. In, well, you earned, you earned your stripes and you were, there was, you know, I've watched your career. I mean, there mm -hmm. was forks in the road and you happened to take the right turn mm -hmm. and then, you know, relationships with people helped you to get where you're at absolutely so it's relationship building it's being in the right place at the right time mm -hmm. there's a little bit of luck involved mm -hmm. and there's a lot of luck involved <laughs> and then <laughs> you know there's a lot of studying and knowing where you are and having that situational awareness and everything that you've done to get to where you are and i think of people like um justin lobato and you know a lot of what i just said about you is true of him too he was Full-time detailer, had, you know, successful detail business, but now he's really integrated into brands, including his own. And Yeah, correct. Um, and then other people I think of, you know, Kelly Harris in, in the UK has, has transitioned from, you know, a well-known high-end detailer into being, you know, associated with a brand. A absolutely. 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 Um, so look, there's, you know, there's some people that are doing this. Um, Jennifer, look at Jennifer. Yeah. You know? I mean, she's killing. We were talking about her earlier and how she's just, we've watched her blossom. Yeah. You know, and it's been so magical. I mean, Jason Kilmer, um, another another great one that has. has I look got, at what Bernice has done, you know, with. Oh, uh, amen. You know, transitioned her detail business into, she leveraged that into like a whole nother training and, you know, really into tinting and films and things like that she's yep. done a fabulous job and she's niched it that's what i love is yeah. it's real and even our training man it, it it our our five day is as much about entrepreneurship and building a life around detailing that it is skills i mean we work your ass off for 60 hours but we we give you a lot of life balance entrepreneurship balance and profitability uh, coaching in there. Um, yeah. I spend more time doing that because that's the hard part. I mean, yeah. let's face it. You, you owned a business. That's the hard part. Yeah. The, you know, the technical work is, 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 is not, I mean, I don't want to discount what we do as trainers, but you've got to know your stuff. You've got to know how not to screw things up. How no, things you're right. absolutely right. Cause I, you know, I, th I think of some of these detailers and you know, we don't have to say their names but there's some detailers that are currently at this moment mm -hmm. are have either launched their own brand of products or they're uh about to mm -hmm. um and i just think about how i don't want to say the word scary but i think it's just i cringe when when i think of them because right now in our industry there's just a lot of that a lot of products and brands coming out right yeah and so when you have a product or a brand and you're throwing it out into this marketplace, it's it's a crowded space. And to your point, you had better have the the knowledge, the sophistication of of marketing and the capital. Mm -hmm. I mean, if if you want to punch into that space, you really got to. I mean, I think of of Kelly Jones right now mm -hmm. launching a product line, but. Mm -hmm. Well, a lot of people don't know, like she was speaking at the Southern Detailers Conference about, you know, her brand and stuff. Mm -hmm. So I'm I'm in the audience and I'm watching the ahas uh and the nodded mm -hmm. heads from detailers like, oh, I want to do what she's doing. But what they don't know is that she has a master's degree. Abs <laughs> absolutely. She has put thousands of dollars of her own money into making that brand happen. I mean, there's a, just a lot of background that to yeah. even get to the point of a launch, you know. We, and, and I really, you know, my, my relationships is it, it grew into PNS and it grew into, I didn't even want my name on the bottle for that reason is because 
deep down I was like, uh oh, wonder if this thing sinks. It's scary. You know, it's I mean, scary. It's gotta be scary to yeah, have your name. Yeah. On a... And 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 it, I was convinced to do it and I'm I'm you know, I, I aligned with the right guys. I yeah. mean, you know, yeah. Bob and Dave Phillips are just I mean, they're just they're amazing. Oh, yeah. unreal. Sixty yeah. year old company, uh fifty five years old at the time. And we, we all put a lot of money, sweat, and tears into the first four years. Mm-hmm. And I did a great job of destroying Bob and Dave's lifestyle because <laughs> <laughs> they work they work their butts off now. You it's know? a lot of work. It um, is. And, you know, we want to encourage you to do it, but you just got to remember, if you've got a good thing going now, I'll tell you what's going to sink you is not having enough capital. Um, spot on. Yeah. I think the, the I, like, I noticed some of these detailers trying to do it on a shoestring budget and... And I'm not here to judge and say that they're not going to make the big time, but that is definitely a harder way to do it. Absolutely. If, if you don't have the capital to drive it. And another thing I've seen, you know, w- with detailers trying to be trainers, detailers trying to have their own product line is, um, you know, there's many of them seeking um, sponsorships from. Yeah. You know, they, they like a brand, they like a product, mm-hmm. and then they call that company and say hey i think you you need to sponsor our company you know because we really like your products and we get those calls and i know i mean i know dylan gets a lot more of them than i do but um it's an awkward conversation because you you don't want to discourage somebody absolutely but you kind of have to educate them and say we're as a manufacturer we're not in business to give our stuff away for free absolutely well, and it comes back to you've got to make yourself valuable enough to where I think the company's got to come to you. Is that if, 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 if. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. Does that make sense? Yeah. Is that I am I first when, 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 when I first got my first opportunity is a detailer are most of us are loyal, but you got to be bone deep loyal. You can't be going from brand to brand to brand to brand to brand to brand to oh, brand to brand. That jumping. is so true, Rennie, because um, I've seen this happen with certain people that, mm-hmm. you know, they. They get a hookup and a sponsorship with one brand, and then that doesn't work out for whatever reason, so they jump to another brand. And then if you just look at their Facebook history and, they, you know, four or five, six brands later, yeah, it doesn't speak to loyalty, no. like you said. No. You know, when I came to Bob and Dave, Bob, Bob I was with, uh, so I, I started out with Flex, and I know it's a four-letter word. Uh, starts with F. <laughs> starts with F. Yep. Um, but you know, Bob, Bob Eichelberg, I mean, he, he changed my life. He really believed me. He came to me and he goes, listen, I, I want to take in, uh, I want to do something with you. Are you open? Mm. And, and honestly, I didn't really know at the time. I mean, I just was like, uh, I'd never really thought of it to be direct and it was going to cut into, you know what I was worried about, Jason was it cutting into my profitability in my company. And mm. a lot of people don't think about that mm. is because once you go to that direction, um, but I had a scalable company at the time. Uh, my shops were scalable. I was working on the business, not in the business. Uh, I had great managers. Uh, and, and, and even then, uh, but I go back, a lot of people don't know it, as I had Shell Oil. I always forget that. <laughs> kind of a big company. Mm. Um, but I co-branded a brand, an entire brand called Flight Jacket. That's where I met Scott McClure mm. back in 99. Mm. And so we ran all the way to 2010 with them. But that was a little different. I wasn't just a paid spokesperson, as I was, you know, as I, I, we, I had, I had skin, I had, I had skin in the game, yeah. you know, with the product. But look at ten years, uh, ten years with Flex, Sonex. I still have a great relationship with Sonex. Mm-hmm. Their products are still here. Mm-hmm. Um, but PNS, when I, when Bob and I talked and Dave, I said, this is it. This is the last. If I do this, is that we're ending our careers all as a team. Yeah. And you've got to have that bone deep, you know, commitment. No, I think you're right on that. And um, the flip side of that loyalty um, and, and some of the, some of the detailers I've talked to that want to be sponsored by a brand and have a connection to a brand, they don't think of this other side of the coin, um, which I'm, I'm a hundred percent aligned with a brand, as you know, mm-hmm. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm paid. To, Absolutely. to wave a certain flag, you right. know, right? But um, a part of me is actually envious of some of the people that don't have that limitation. And I do think of it as a, a limitation. You you know, you have to, if you're that aligned with a brand, you have to wave that flag. You have to sing that song. And what some detailers don't think of is that you are kind of boxing yourself into a corner. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And and some of them don't play that game very well. They're like, okay, I sign up with this brand, but now I still want to play Switzerland about it and and play the field. And then you lose relationships because people don't like that. You know? Absolutely. You know, yeah. all all the years, look at the time back with Flex. People thought I didn't use Rupes at all. I had to give that imagery mm. out to the industry because I was with Flex. You know, and I know it, and Flex knew it, is that in the training center, I had to be Switzerland. So I had yeah. to have your guys' tools in. I had mm. to, you know, but on the outside, that that couldn't that couldn't come out. Uh, yeah. PNS, you know, I mean, I'm very careful. I love other brands. There's a lot of other brands in here. There's your brand sitting right here, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Um, but I'm still, I've still got to take and realize, you know, that that no, it's right. And you and I this morning talked about mm-hmm. a product we both like, but mm-hmm. you know, we can't sing that song on mm-hmm. public. No, exactly, <laughs> we can't. And so, because it's not our brand. Yeah. So you know, we've got all these things, and I'm telling you, don't. We want you, those of you that are thinking in these career paths, is to be successful and have the right attitude about it. We're not saying don't do it. We're just yeah. saying if you're going to do it, go do it right. And prepare for the steps. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and, and make yourself valuable before you do it. Just yeah. because you're good doesn't make you valuable. And, you know, Chip Foos. We both know Chip Foos. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, why, did, why did Chip Foos get picked up? Chip Foos had – I used to see Chip Foos at the Pomona – uh, car auction, Pomona auction. Remember that yeah. back in the day? Yeah. Before anybody in the world knew who Chip Foose was. He laid down foundations for two decades before. Before he got scooped up. Yeah. Yep. I mean, decades yeah. of work. So right. the, the other big one, and I know you guys are affected by this, is wholesale. A, a oh, lot of- my gosh. We, um, and, and, you know, Dylan Von Kleist with Rupus, he's the one that fields a lot of these requests. But I, I get them, too. So in a training class, mm-hmm. um, you know, it probably happens to you, but you get detailers walk up and they're like, hey, I, I'm i a great detailer. We have a big business and we could sell your product out of our lobby to our customers. So set us up with a wholesale account and we're going to set the world on fire with selling your stuff, right? And it's an awkward conversation because um, if, if you think of it from the manufacturer's perspective, it's very muddy water to, like, offer a distributorship of your products to mm-hmm. an end user. You know? Very, very. It's awkward. Well, not only that, but you've got to think, guys and gals, that there are, there are warehouse-level distributors mm-hmm. all over the country and all over the world and you probably fit into one of those markets where there are a major distributor, yeah. and they they're 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 going through a lot of volume, a, a lot. And we've got a storefront program, and we help out, and a lot of detailers still want to get in at which really, for for our little storefront, it it offers you a great way to get your feet wet in in, in it, make some money off yeah. of it, but they. We hear it all the time is, well, I want to go main distributor. And we're like, well, there's a big investment in that, and there's a big guarantee in that. You've got to go through quarterly, you know, tens of thousands of dollars of products. Mm-hmm. you got to ask yourself, you you got to have a starting point. And so going to, you know, a big company like Rupes and saying, hey, I want to take in, you know, I want to sell your product, well, that, that, that kind of puts them at a, at a, in a in a pickle. Yeah. Because they, yeah. they want they want to – they want to. They want to take it and say, "Yeah," but they. They, many times they can't. Well, and also the history is kind of. Um, I don't want to say it shut the door on that opportunity, but it really puts a black cloud over it mm-hmm. because historically, and this happened at McGuire's too. McGuire's got a lot of these requests from detailers. Mm-hmm. Hey, I want to sell McGuire's out the front door, which actually makes sense, you know, because they had retail consumer products. That, Absolutely. You know, people do or yourself could do, um, but. It just historically hasn't worked that well. Yeah. So if you look at the times that we've tried it, and then what happens is there's a some inventory in some detailer's lobby, and a lot of it ends up gets used in the back garage, and yep. they just bought it at wholesale. You know, so and they circumvented not. your own distribution. Yeah. To get product, so it, it just hasn't worked. Well, and let me tell you, you might not have heard this, is that I did a, that exact thing in 2003, is we had a warehouse distributor at our Idaho location. I talked him into set me up as a local distributor in Sun Valley because I had a nice lobby. Mm. 
I had a nice, a, a great following. We were the number one detailer up there. We hosted a lot of car events. We partook in a lot of car events. And uh, that was the worst money I had ever invested because my clients were coming to me as a detailer. And I thought I'd just blow that $10,000 investment right out the door and, you know, right. three weeks later. Right. And, and it stuck around for a while. Matter of fact, I remember having to go and dust the bottles off. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. That's another thing is I go back, you know, a year later after these deals and the, just the whole shelf full of product is dusty. Yeah. And so it just... Um, so you're the reason why this is happening. That's exactly it. I'm partially, <laughs> put, and it was it was funny because I was one of those. I was I, I my mind thought was exactly where I know these guys are. Is hey man, I want to take in you know I'm going to sublet now. There are some opportunities now in 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 where companies are private labeling for detailers, and I love it. Jim Gogan just had it. And he's going to buy. Is he says you know I can give out X Y Z product to my customers afterwards. Well, that's a different story because you're buying in low low volume. Yeah, and it's got your brand and it's something that your customers are going to use on their car, and, and especially now with coatings and so forth. I get it, but even then, you got to be careful because you know product shelf life on products and yeah. everything else, and then you don't mm -hmm. want those bottles dusty. Um, you know, let's talk about uh, the the product brand challenges mm. is, is, is going out and we're watching this and, and, and my name's on the product. I teamed up with PNS, one of the, you know, a, yeah. a very formidable, you know, they, they had a reputation in Northern California, very strong in Northern California. Um, the challenge that, that, that I want you to do is listen, think big, don't ever stop thinking big, you know, think forward movement, think for your next deal. But what makes the most sense? Yeah is don't 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 lose the dollar and cents part of it because you know having your own brand uh having your own training center um becoming a spokesperson is it gonna take away how you make your daily living right now mm. and if it's gonna affect that i can guarantee you this anything that you do in any of these categories that we talked about today is going to take a lot of your time it's going to take a lot of effort and 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 if it takes away from your main main source of or main source of income, what's that going to do to you and your family? What's that going to do to your business? Yeah. Ask yourself that question and then move forward. So, well, I think this was kind of cool. Yeah. Um, it you know it uh, it's always good being around you. And uh, anything you ask, Dad, you know, to today's topic and kind of where we went with this well and, i just want to really express my appreciation for doing this class we did yesterday because it was not only fun but um it was very meaningful for me because like i said we've been my academy has been closed so mm -hmm. having this size class and i just you know i made a career out of connecting with detailers and um serving detailers with knowledge and education and so what i live for is doing what i did with you yesterday so it's just um, a very exciting time for me. Well, and I, I think what was magical for me is watching you work the room mm. is from an outsider looking in is connecting with people and you taking the notes that you did. Mm. That was really impressive is that, you know, so many people, they see people on the top and they think, oh, man, that guy thinks he's all it. Jason Rose is it. And you know what? He was very concerned about everybody that was in that class. And it was really enlightening to watch your concerns with not just the guys or gals that were performing at the highest level, but every single person that was there. Yeah. And that was really cool. So well, thank you. It was an honor. So now for those that, that don't happen to know you, if you're new to the industry, I'm going to encourage you to get to know who Jason is. Um, how do they follow you? How, what, what's the best way to connect with you uh, on social media and so forth? Well, there's different um, ways to see content with me. I've kind of, I'm actually... I'm proud of a unique niche in our industry because there's lots of trainers that have their own YouTube channel mm -hmm. either by themselves or with a company. Um, but for 30 years, um, I don't have my own YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. I, and I don't have my... I pretty much don't even have my own social media channels. I, I don't even know how to use Instagram. So. <laughs> <laughs> but what I've done is I've done a lot of fantastic reaching detailers and kind of spreading a wide net uh, by hitching my wagon up to other people's channels. So mm -hmm. so if you look at um, the content from Kevin Brown mm -hmm. from Buff Daddy, mm -hmm. if you look at the content from Larry Cosilla mm -hmm. of Ammo, 
if you look at you know Maguire's during those 20 years I was with them and their channels um, and then you look at Rupus channels YouTube channels then you'll see a lot of content so cool um, you you just google you know Jason Rose Rupus or Jason Rose Maguire's you're gonna see all kinds of content um, Jason Rose ammo there's this, I don't know how many YouTube videos Larry and I have done together. A lot. It's just a, a lot. ton. It's a lot of content. Um, so that's one way to kind of see what I've been doing. Um, and then, you know, I'm not real good at uh, managing my own social media ca- mm-hmm. accounts, I have to say. But, right. Well, but, you get inundated. We were talking about that. You know, the worst, the worst way, I'm going to go ahead and answer for Jason. If you want to contact them, don't do it through Facebook or Instagram. <laughs> yeah. Because, you know, unless we happen to look down, I mean, yeah. I, I heard your yeah. phone going off all weekend. Yeah. I, unless we happen to be looking, it, it, and it's not that we don't, anybody doesn't want it, to, it's inundated. No, it's hundreds and hundreds of, you know, and I know you get them, but mm-hmm. Facebook Messenger, Instagram oh. messages. And uh, I love to connect with detailers, but it's just, I it would... It would honestly be a full-time job just responding to messages. Absolutely. And so, well, hey, hey guys, if you enjoyed this uh, podcast, make sure to share it and uh, reach out, show some support for uh, not only Jason, but Rupes for sending him here. Yeah. Uh, we appreciate uh, everybody. Uh, we'll grease the wheels a little bit with your bosses. Yeah. And uh, we appreciate you coming out, not just for the weekend, but for the for the day-to-day to make the podcast and uh, we look forward to coming out. I, I want to get back. If you guys haven't been to Denver to the training uh, facility at mm. Route S, uh, PNS had uh, an event there a couple of years ago, and it is incredible. And it's an incredible training. Uh, I remember Jason getting a hold of me, and he goes, "Okay, what what role do you want to play in the training?" And I said, uh, "Student." Uh, I remember that conversation. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, "Student," because and it's like this time I observed a lot. I listened to him. Mm. So there's an example, two guys that, you know, between us, we've got a lot of decades in, in, mm-hmm. in, in the seat. And yet I just sat there and took notes, a lot of notes mm-hmm. uh, yesterday as you spoke. And so if you think you know it all, uh, rethink that because, yeah. man, I, I'm a sponge. And I know Jason is. I watch him. I, I watch him when somebody says something. I'll always know when, when, they, when they cued you up mm-hmm. because you'll sit there and you'll listen and then you go, okay, You'll, you'll come back. you got a really cool way of coming back and say, okay, so, hey, that, that, that product you are just talking about, you know, let's talk about that for yeah. a second, you know. <laughs> and so you'll go back and get that, you know, get the information out of them yeah. in a really cool way. And so, uh, you know, it, uh, it's awesome to watch you. But, hey, thanks, everybody. Make yeah. sure to uh, share this podcast. Show some love to Jason. Thanks for being on, Jason, and uh, we'll see you next time. Yeah, my pleasure. Thank you. All right, guys. Take care.